Okay, um, I'm David Miller now. Um, Deepa has referred to him, is from the University of Bristol and has also been in the spotlight <laughs> over the uh, anti-Semitism smear campaign. Thank you very much for joining us, Comrade. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, good to see you, Deepa. Uh, of course, uh, the Assange case is a, a landmark case, um, which uh, everyone should be uh, supporting. I, I wanted to say a few things about the, I've been invited to say a few things about the, the university sector uh, and uh, the uh, anti-Semitism, alleged anti-Semitism crisis. And I want to start by uh, say, say by agreeing and then disagreeing with Tony. Uh, I think this is what I do every time I come on. <laughs> First of all, uh, Tony is completely correct about free speech. It's not an unlimited right. You can't shout, shout fire in a crowded theatre and nor indeed can you uh, organize to uh, commit genocide and eliminate uh, an ethnic group. Uh, that's, that's not legitimate free speech. Now, someone's mentioned earlier uh, um, that a, a distinction between uh, talking about genocide and organizing genocide. Now, this is a distinction of no meaning whatsoever. The idea, uh, the thing which worries me about, one of the things which worries me about free speech, the idea of free speech is that it, it tries to or it diverts attention away from the fact that there are more things in the world than speech. Uh, there are actions in the world. The Palestinians are oppressed, not just through speech and proper. Oops. Oh, I hope. Hello. Oh, that's Hello. Sorry, you were stuck Sorry. for a second there, but you can okay, go on. Uh, I mean, so, so, you know, free speech, yes, it's an, an important principle, and of course we have, we have to defend key, key cases like Julian Assange and, and others, but, you know, the, the enemy we face here is, is Zionism and uh, the, the imperial policies of the Israeli state, uh, and free speech is not the main problem here, it seems to me. It's a problem, but not the main problem. So this is where I want to disagree with Tony, right? Tony said that uh, on, on the, the question of naming the organisation, that it started with the Labour Party. It didn't start with the Labour Party. It's not started with the Labour Party and moved to the universities. It's an all out onslaught by the Israeli government, mainly through the Ministry of Strategic Affairs, but also other ministries too, on the left globally. And this is not something which just happened in Britain, just to the Labour Party, just to the universities, etc., which I'll come to I'll talk about in a minute. It's also happened in France and Germany before it got to the the, the UK and it happened in the of course it's been happening in the US as we saw with uh, Bernie Sanders and uh, Ilhan Omar etc. This is a an all out attack by the Israeli government. It's not something to do with the Labour Party really. The Labour Party is you know a mere detail of this attempt by the Israelis to impose their will uh, all over the world. Uh, and that, that's I think is what what we should recognise. It's not just a question of uh, of, um, of being allowed to say of Zionism's bad or Zionism's racism, which of course we should be allowed to say because you know it is, uh, but also it's not just a question of that, it's a question of how do we defeat the ideology of Zionism in practice? How, how do we make sure that Zionism uh, is ended essentially? And there, I mean, there's no w other way than saying that. It's, it's, not, it's not enough for us to say Zionism is racism, uh, Israel is a settler colonial society. That, these, are, these are arguments we might make, yes, but the the, end, the aim of this is not just to, to say things, but to end settler colonialism uh, in Palestine and to end Zionism as an ideology, as a functioning ideology of the world. And so that's the thing which, which worries me most about the idea of freedom of speech is that it diverts our attention from the, the practical realities, the material, can I use that word, Tony? I think you would, you would approve of that, the material realities yeah. uh, of, um, of the jackboot on the neck of the Palestinians. So that's my, my, pre, my sort of, I agree with Tony, I don't agree with Tony uh, preamble. On to the question of the universities. Now, uh, people have mentioned- um, Two minutes, comrades, please, yeah. Two, okay. Two minutes, okay. Uh, people have mentioned um, the, the UCL vote, and this is, a, this is a dramatic event that uh, UCL have voted to uh, get rid of the IHRA. This is the first time it's happened. A um, uh, uh, concerted lobbying uh, effort by the Israelis uh, over the uh, holiday period and the, the new year to try and uh, undermine this possibility, but people have stood firm and voted against the IHRA. And this is the, this is the beginning of our fight battle. 
uh, I want to say a few words about that very quickly. I mean, the the people will probably be, be aware that the the of the four options which were on the the ballot, the option which has been favoured is the option to withdraw the IHRA but to replace it with something else. Now, this is the second best option in my view. They should have just been uh, retracted and uh, uh, not replaced. But we faced, as a result, uh, a huge struggle over what will, it will be replaced with. Now, of course, the Zionists will come up and they already are planning uh, their, uh, uh, their alternative to the IHRA. It's called, called the Jerusalem Declaration. Uh, and it will be uh, announced shortly at the time of their choosing when they think it's going to make the most uh, impact and have the most effect. So what we'll be, we'll be faced with here is especially uh, a liberal Zionist case for uh, suggesting that there is a serious problem of anti-Semitism or Judeophobia uh, in this country when there, there isn't a serious problem. Um, and uh, the, they will try and get that back on the, uh, on the agenda. So we face a massive battle over that. Now, this is a battle which is going on not just at UCL, but throughout all of the universities that, uh, in this country. Uh, as some of you will know, I've been attacked um, uh, and complained about by the head of the Bristol JSOC, the, the Jewish Society, along with the, the president of the Union of Jewish Students, um, who are, which are, both of which organizations are, of course, formerly members of the Zionist movement. They uh, are all part, they, JSOCs are all part of the UJS. The UJS is a member of the World Union of Jewish Students, which is a direct member of the World Zionist Organization and in its, uh, constituent, its, its constitution, the UJS, uh, of course, mentions uh, being pro-Israel. So that's, those kinds of complaints have been made uh, across the country in different places. They, one against me in Bristol, there's been one in, in Warwick, again, made by uh, a UJS uh, or JSOC uh, person, and there have been several others. And we will continue to see this attempt to drive the possibility of anybody speaking out about um, Palestine or about what Zionism is or uh, having any kind of critical account of Zionism as racism or settler colonialism, uh, etc. And, and we, we have to, to fight back against that. And the way to fight back against it is to organise proper debates and to get people to understand the issues, but not to be fooled by the idea that there is some kind of liberal Zionist panacea, which is not as bad as the IHRA in some respects, we have to make sure that we are properly across those debates uh, and, and can fight back uh, against them when, when they are launched, which they will be very shortly. So I, I, this is a, a problem for, for freedom of speech. I'm going to finish now for, for freedom of speech and also for, for academic freedom. You know, the, 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 the complaint about me was, uh, was about a lecture that I gave on Islamophobia, uh, where I said that um, one of the, what, what I've called the five pillars of Islamophobia is parts of the Zionist movement. Now, this is simply a matter of fact, the Zionist movement, uh, uh, parts of it are engaged in, in deliberately fostering Islamophobia. It's, uh, it's fundamental to, the, to, to, to Zionism to uh, encourage uh, Islamophobia and anti-Arab racism too. Um, and the, the pressure that they're, that they're um, mounting here is to try and get us to stop teaching this stuff, to stop writing about it and speaking about it in public, and indeed to stop researching it. So, so we, can't, we can't properly go around about researching um, Zionism or the Israeli state or the Ministry of Strategic Affairs, which is of course behind this whole anti-Semitism crisis, uh, because uh, it, to do so will be in, somehow, in some way anti-Semitic. So I think this is a, this is a valuable effort to to focus on the issue of free speech, but we must also remember, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, academic freedom, which is uh, a specific and separate uh, act, uh, right, as you, as you will you'll know in the Education Act. Uh, and lastly, to say that, you know, that, that it's not just that we want to be able to speak, you know, we want to be able to win as well as to speak. Uh, and that's what I would uh, want us to remember. Thank you very much, comrade. Well done. Um, this is... Uh an ongoing debate, and I'm sure we won't have the, the last of it yet. Um, we have Jamie 